Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Evolution and now we are discussing the theories of evolution. We already discussed two theories that is Lamarck's theory and also Darwin's theory of evolution. After Darwin, that is post-Darwinian theory is by Hugo de Vries who was a Dutch botanist and he proposed his theory on evolution in the year 1901. According to him, the driving force behind evolution is mutation. So when Darwin told it was a slow, gradual, directional process called a natural selection. For example, if this is a species, this species undergoes multiplication to form many species of the own kind, right? New offsprings of this kind. After a few generations, maybe there occur a small variation, the color change. Maybe that color change is advantageous. Again, it is producing more and more of the same kind. Later, another change. So, very gradually, this process is happening. Ultimately, there can become a change into another species. So, it's a slow, gradual process, adding up uh, slow changes. According to Debris, a new species can form from an already existing species by a single process of mutation, which is sudden, which is inheritable, discontinuous genetic variation. Maybe this is our first species from this by a single step mutation totally different species is forming. So we know that entirely different but it is a single step process but it is heritable because any change happening to the DNA will be heritable. So it will inherit to the next generation and it is discontinuous because it was not in a particular direction it was happening. It can happen in any direction. Discontinuous means from this it may go to this or all of a sudden it is becoming this. So these sudden heritable changes are called a mutation. Mutations uh, is by genetic variation. And he also mentioned about a single step large mutation which can lead to the formation of a new species in a single step. Such a large mutation is called a saltation. Hugo de Vries conducted his experiments in a plant called a evening primrose or Enothera lamarckiana which is a scientific name of that plant. So once he self pollinated, so then there were normal plants, normal plants they were self pollinated. Okay. So once the plants were self-pollinated, he was expecting the offsprings are similar to the parents, but he got two different types of offsprings. Majority of the plants were normal. Okay, majority and writing capital M, uh, normal plants like the parent plant, but a few different varieties were there. That is minority. A few plants were different from the parent plant. Different in the sense their flower shape was different, leaf shape was different, stem color, size of the bud, lots of differences were there compared to the plant that we took. Again he self pollinated this, he collected the seed and then he grew again two types. Okay, a few majority of the plants were like the parent plant, a few plants were like a again new type. So always a new types formed, these new types he called as mutants. So the new type of plants formed are called mutants and the process is called a mutation. And based on this he observed evolution as progressive or retrogressive. Because some uh, new varieties they had some qualities or characters which were new not there in the parent plant. So those were called a progressive type. Whereas some plants were losing some of the characteristics from the parent plant, they were called a retrogressive type. So some notable features of mutation theory are, mutation is the raw material for evolution. Mutation happens suddenly and visible changes can be observed in the offsprings. And the newly formed offsprings or the mutant will be entirely different from the parents without having any intermediate stages. Some mutation may occur uh, so that the character can be chosen by nature, that is natural selection. Mutation has a genetic basis. New species can form from a pre-existing species only by mutation. Let us see what are the evidences in favor of this theory. First of all, other scientists also did certain experiments in other organisms or plants and animals and they found that mutation could produce new species. 
and we have a few examples where uh, mutation produced a different varieties of animals. For example, in the case of Ankan sheep, from a parent by a single mutation, short legged sheep produced by a single birth. And that was as condition was advantageous to the farmers because the short legged ones couldn't jump over the low stone fences. Then another one was Hereford cattle. They were also hornless, that is, from a parent by a single mutation, a new offspring appeared which was hornless. Okay. Then hairless cats, dogs, mice also have developed by single mutation. So these are all examples that new or individual or offspring can form from mutation. Then Enothera lamarckiana, the plant in which Hugo de Vries conducted his experiment had 14 as the chromosome number. So normal chromosome number of that plant was 14. And we found when he did self-pollination and he found a group of them were uh, entirely different from the parents. Again, he, when he conducted self-pollination, they were again different from uh, their parents. So each time, a few markedly different offsprings he was getting. But when he uh, checked their chromosome numbers, it, that was also different. It was 16, 20, 22. So we know chromosome number is fixed for a particular species. If the chromosome number is changing, what does that mean? The species is also changing, right? And also mutations have got genetic basis and also a single large mutation. As I already mentioned, saltation can lead to uh, formation of a new species from a pre-existing species also. So when there are evidences for or in favor of this theory, uh, definitely there are theories against this theory also. Uh, the first uh, evidence against it is mutation is of rare occurrence. It's not always happening, okay? So if it is a rare occurrence, could it have led to this multitude of species, thousands and millions of species around us only by mutation? Chances less, right? And another thing, in the previous video when we discussed about Darwin's natural selection, there we talked about mimicry of organisms or camouflage or the position of nectaries and proboscis of insects, that all we discussed. All these couldn't have arisen only by mutation. Another thing, mutation is mostly recessive. But only dominant mutation can lead to change in a species. Next theory is very important in terms of your CBSC board examination. You may be asked a question, differentiate between Darwin's theory of evolution and Hugo de Vries theory of evolution. According to Darwin, minor variations in characteristics bring about evolution, whereas according to Hugo de Vries, mutation or large sudden differences cause evolution. And Darwin's variations are small changes, Mutations are large or random changes. Variations are always directional. Mutations are directionless, that is random. Evolution for Darwin was gradual process. Hugo de Vries believed single step large mutation like saltation caused evolution. So four points are expected. Mostly this is asked as a two mark question. Hope you understood the concept well. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.